Pennsylvania Dutch furniture, of course, is quite famous, especially antique furniture, although arguably it's still available today, but we're looking at the more colonial period here. So the late seven, it's basically the 17th and 18th centuries. Now, most of their furniture is very simple. It tends to be very utilitarian, something very similar to what you would see from Central Europe. But in more formal spaces, they will paint furniture and sometimes add decorative elements, although the decorative elements tend to be small and pretty straightforward. This is the sort of thing that could be done by a farmer or farmer's wife uh, by sort of common people. We aren't really dealing with furniture that is necessarily created by a specialty artisan. They will paint furniture in other colors. So we will see the use of yellow, blue, and red on a fairly regular basis, along with uh, green and some mottled browns. And this is just to break up the furniture. Otherwise, you can imagine if this was just a big natural wood piece, how it would just sort of stand as this great wood-colored monolith in the room, especially with its very simple design. Now, they will use panel construction for almost all of their furniture. In some cases, they will actually build arches around those panels, as we see in this chest here, in which case they generally will paint those arches and make the architectural details stand out. In this case, by putting a bird motif inside these arches, and then along the outside, we have a series of angels and we have a series of uh, general sort of abstract forms, flower and plant forms. Now, they will also use the Chippendale style. They will simplify it, but they will use something very similar to that style. So here we see that large decorative crown uh, in the form of a cornice. We see the use of architectural detail in the columns surrounding the two doors. We see a larger base containing three drawers and the use of a bracket leg. Uh, so that cut leg that looks like it's part of a solid apron that's just been cut out as if I've just cut the middle of it out. So they're going to incorporate these ideas. Now they simplify the Chippendale, but they like the Chippendale because it has those much simpler lines than what we, you might expect from the Rococo in this period. Now, some of the forms that they do create are going to be the ladder back. They also create their own form of the Windsor chair. And when they do this, generally a ladder back is exactly what it sounds like. The back of the chair has horizontal slats in the place of the highly vertical splat that we're used to from Queen Anne or Chippendale of the period in Europe. The seat is generally going to be woven. The reason is that's just the materials that they have and that's going to be the easiest way to do it. It's also generally more comfortable than a hard wooden seat. We will also see the development of the sawbuck table. And here, this is very similar to our trestle table, which let me remind you, a trestle table generally has a leg that comes down, splits here, and then we have a stringer that runs between the two legs, which in this case are very, very close together in my drawing. So that trestle table gets translated into the sawbuck table where they, instead of using that vertical, they create an X form at the ends of the table and it's still drawn together by this horizontal stringer. Uh, it's just running right through the middle of that X form. And it's the sort of thing where with the appropriate shaped cuts, I can do this without any metallic materials whatsoever. I don't need nails or screws to put this together. Whereas, uh, and it's going to be longer lived than what you would see in a trestle table, for example. And they will create something called a shrank. And in the book, it calls it a shunk but there is no reference to that anywhere else. So I'm going with the more antique term, shrank. And here what you see is a large wardrobe that's split into three. So we have that middle column, but it's a very wide middle column compared to the width of the doors. So the doors open, this piece stays in place. It tends to have that very Chippendale cornice to it, so a very large cornice as well as the drawers and bracket foot 
of the Chippendale. But in this case, it's painted, something we would never see from the Chippendale unless it was uh, uh, chinoiserie or one of those other forms. So here it's painted in that green form with sort of an abstract pattern, almost bone-like pattern here, painted onto the panels. There's a name on it, not terribly uncommon. These are ultimately the largest, most decorative pieces in the home. So you're going to spend time decorating it. It's just instead of doing it in wood with relief carving, they're doing it generally with paint. And the panel construction really speaks to that ability to paint it with different motifs on each panel.